Mr. Speaker, last year the net debt of our province grew by $1.4 billion. Right. This included a deficit of just over $500 million, plus just over $750 million because the government borrowed money to pay for capital expenditures. A major capital expenditure was infrastructure. The Premier has said he used PST money to build infrastructure. But public accounts show that the Premier actually borrowed money to pay for much of the infrastructure built last year. Why did the Premier say he used PST money for infrastructure when, in fact, much of the money was actually borrowed money and not from the PST increase at all? Mr. Speaker, the uh, additional resources the additional resources from the PST supported infrastructure investments in Manitoba. We made a record amount of infrastructure investments in the province as we committed to the people of Manitoba. Uh, we spent well over $700 million on that. We published a report on that which shows that it created over 8,100 jobs, lifted the economy by $1.1 billion, paved roads throughout Manitoba, including strategic infrastructure that supports Centreport, Highway 75, Highway No. 10, Highway No. 1, going both east and west. And all of these things will increase the productivity of our economy while creating good jobs in Manitoba right now. So we said we would dedicate the resources from the PST to infrastructure, and we have made sure that infrastructure reflects the amount of money raised on the PST, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Premier says reflects. It doesn't mean that the money actually raised from the PST went to provide infrastructure. No. In fact, the provincial government report says the government raised $190 million from the increase in the PST last year. $75 million, as the government already acknowledged, was not spent on infrastructure but on other items. Mm -hmm. other items. Of the other. $115 million, which the Premier claims he spent on new infrastructure, Quite a lot of this money was actually borrowed money, according to the public accounts documents exactly. which I table. How long does the Kill Premier the believe that he can deceive Manitobans as to where the money for infrastructure misled. actually came yeah. from? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate uh, getting the information from the member opposite. The, we said that we would dedicate the uh, PST resources to addressing infrastructure priorities of Manitobans. And we put forward a five-year plan to do that, a $5.5 billion plan. And that plan will create approximately 60,000 jobs over the life of that plan, person years of employment. It will lift the economy by over $6 billion. It will increase exports outside of Manitoba. It will create good job opportunities now and result in very significant investment in private equipment and private sector investment in Manitoba. That's all by way of ensuring that we grow the economy at a time when the global economy has been fragile. So the PST people said make sure that those resources result in good infrastructure investments in Manitoba, and we have ensured that those resources have resulted in good infrastructure investments in Manitoba, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Premier and today's NDP took $190 million from the pockets of Manitobans by raising the PST from 7 per cent to 8 per cent. And yet now we know that the money that was actually used for infrastructure was to a great extent borrowed money going to the very purpose which Manitobans were told by this Premier he was using for infrastructure. Manitobans know that borrowing money comes at a cost. The people of our province can't stand to fall further into the bottomless pit of debt that the Premier keeps digging for us. Does the Premier realize how much more of a future financial burden he, he and today's care. NDP are imposing on everyday Manitobans? By the course he's taken. He we, we follow the generally accepted accounting principles where infrastructure is amortized and spread over the life of the asset. If it's a road up to 20 years, a building up to 40 years, we follow the standard accounting procedures for that. <coughs> With respect to the debt, Mr. Speaker, the debt as a proportion of our economy is lower now at about 29% than when it was when we came into office. 
and the cost of servicing the debt in Manitoba is less than half the, than it was when we came into office. It was about 13.3 cents on the dollar to service the debt in 99. Last year's budget showed about 5.8 cents on the dollar to service the debt. So at a time when the economy needs to have productive investments to create good jobs and to stimulate growth, we are doing that. Interest rates are at a record low. The cost of borrowing is at a record low. And the cost of servicing our debt in Manitoba is less than half than it was when we came into office. Our economy has performed in the top three in the country over the last decade. And that is a testament to good public policy supporting economic growth in Manitoba, accompanied by good private sector investment and good trading opportunities for young people so they can stay and live and work in the great province of Manitoba, Mr. Speaker.